West Tigers fans, our boys head out to Bathurst to take on the reigning premiers, the Penrith Panthers. We are long outsiders, but we have some young guns back in the squad. Do we have a chance to create another upset? Let's find out and let's preview the game on another episode of the West Life Podcast. Welcome in to a, another episode of the West Live Podcast. I am your host, Josh Barnett. Please give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter at West Live Pod if you haven't done so yet. Uh, on those pages, you'll find our Linktree link, or you can find that at westtigers.com.au. That is a link to everything we do, including our YouTube channel. Shouts to all our viewers coming in as we do twice a week. Uh, We record live, so if you're listening to this on the audio pipes, be sure to join us if you can uh, one Monday or Wednesday evening. And um, we've already got a super chat from one of our super fans already coming through, so how good. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Westlife. Also, if you'd like to support the show as well, and as Always, we are sponsored and presented by Holman Barnes Group, the best place to watch the game live and loud on Saturday. If you're not making the drive out Bathurst Way, uh, it is, of course, West Ashfield on the big screen. You can have an Italian or Chinese, succulent Chinese meal as you watch the game. Uh, seeing as we are playing, when I say we, not us, not us three, we're not running out on, uh, on Saturday. We'll be watching it on the television, but one man who lived pretty close to Bathurst and used to make the trip from Orange into the big city almost on a weekly basis. Mr. Thompson, how are you this evening? Yeah, g'day, Josh. G'day, Rob. G'day, everyone who's listening in. I'm pretty good, mate. Uh, Obviously, not a great performance last week, but uh, for the team perspective, if you want a chance to test yourself and see how far you've come along, the three-time defending premiers with or without their star halfback is a pretty good yardstick to to see where you're at. Is it a little bit annoying, As that this would be a home game for you, but now you're living in the big smoke? A little bit. Um, I wanted to go to the Bathurst game last year, but wasn't able to. And had I still been living down there, I probably would have gone this year as well. Um, kind Kind of a good thing I didn't go last year, considering the conditions and supposed to be a bit better. Uh, this time around, although I, I'm still planning to do a, uh, a rain dance at some point pre-game <laughs> and hopefully yeah. get some clouds going down there. I'm sure all the fans that are making their way to the game will be very happy that you want the rain <laughs> to pour down upon them. <laughs> I'm sure uh, they'll survive. Coming in, we win again. Coming in from the Red Room, Mr. Bashara, how are you this evening? Uh, good evening, boys. Good evening, everyone. I'm well. Uh, looking forward to the big bounce back this week, hopefully. Uh, normally say the Super Chats, but Brennan W, he's dropped this literally an hour and a half before we went on to air tonight. He said, can't make tonight's potty. Uh, use this as a token for a beer at West Ashfield. Biggest test yet for the character of the, this team. Play for the Jersey Boys. He sent us eight bucks to rev up the West Tigers. Let's hope they're listening. I don't know if any... I know Shawnee Bloor used to listen. Probably doesn't now. But uh, look, if any players are listening... Brennan W has sent us eight bucks. And if that doesn't inspire you to beat the reigning premiers, I don't know what will. So uh, thank you very much for that, Brendan. As you listen back to this, I assume, on Thursday morning. Uh, we, have, As I mentioned, we are sponsored by Holman Barnes Group. If you are looking for a place to watch the game, the big, massive cinema-sized screen at West Ashfield, it's amazing. You'd the whole room's packed with West Tigers fans. You can get a feed at the new Bellagio restaurant, a uh, nice wood fire pizza, or go to the uh, Shanghai Knights uh, Chinese restaurant that's opened as well recently. And you can get that and watch the footy with a nice schooner of just quietly. Uh, we're not sponsored by any beer company. So I will. This is a, a massive free plug. When I watch the game at West Ashfield uh, against the Dolphins, have you boys trolled, as you don't drink, so um, might not be 
so much for you, but the blockers beer, the front row lager is on tap at West Ashfield. I had a couple, I had one of those and then went back for another one while there were Tigers were playing. I did need very rarely to get a second second beer, but I went back for another one. It's um it is a, a good beer. So shouts to Blocker. He can have some pretty annoying takes in the media, but he's brewed a pretty good beer. So free advertising for uh for them, but they have it on tap at West Ashfield. Uh shouts to Chase Bet as well. If you go to uh, the link, uh, westtigers.com.au, the big purple button, sign up to Chase Bet um, via that link and then send them a little chat message saying the West Life podcast sent you. The guys, it's obviously um, a smaller than the big one, so it's very personal and they, they'll get back to you and, yeah, give you um, a nice little welcome uh, and then, yeah, we're looking at doing more things as well, West Tigers wise as well. Some more fun things incoming. Uh, what are you prepared to lose today? Set a deposit limit for free and confidential support. Call 1 800 858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Right. So, no news. I didn't put it in so much before we get into the team list. The only little bit of news that I saw pop up. Fellas was, I mean, playing Penrith this week, the news of James Fisher-Harris going to the Warriors. And, of course, it wouldn't be a rugby league story without the West Tigers being linked in some way or another. But Roberto Stefano Utoi Kamanu, we're not going to, until he plays State of Origin this year and this clause in his contract is null and void, are we just going to keep hearing that, this? Do you think there's any... Any chance that Steph's going to leave us to go to the uh, the the dwindling, fast exiting Penrith Panthers? No, we are the West Tigers, so anything's possible. But uh, look, I don't think anyone should be in panic mode right now. Uh, I'd just be a little bit concerned in the fact. I, I think obviously this James Fisher Harris thing. I mean, contrary to what they're saying, it couldn't have all been done over three days. So you just think a club like Penrith would have a a plan or an alternative or or someone in mind uh, to replace Fisher Harris. So, look, just a little bit of a concern there. And obviously, you know, there's a tiny bit of concern about Richo being uh, linked back with his former club, South Sydney. So, mm. there's look, whenever there's a story about the Tigers, positive or negative, the media are going to jump on it because it attracts our attention. So, uh, look, we've just got to sit tight, be patient. Look, hopefully, hopefully Madge does choose Steph. I, I think... Steph would be a perfect prop from the bench. Like, he really mm. will create impact. Um, but, again, I mean, there are so many good props to choose from and some that have had plenty more experience than uh, Steph's, what was it, 12 to 14 minutes thereabouts. Mm. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it all pans out. As what do you think Steph's chances are of playing Origin this year? Based on his performance this year, performances so far this year, I actually don't mind his chances. Um, he seems to be one of the, the leading props in the competition despite his young age. Uh, he's leading from the front for us and putting on a putting on a performance at week in, week out, which is really good to see. Um, plus, he's obviously got a relationship with Madge from when Madge was the coach of mm. the Tigers. So I, I think there's a decent chance that if he keeps up this good form, there is a chance that he could get um, a bit of a run off the bench in origin again this year. Yep, fingers crossed. Uh, just a bit beyond the contract, I think he just deserved it and deserves it. And it's... It's a little bit rare these. I mean, we obviously have had Appy, but it'd be nice to have another Tiger to cheer for in Origin as well. So he, he does. I mean, we will lose them. What's the Origin situation? Who are we playing this year as during Origin Week to rack your brain? Uh, so we have the buy in the first of the majorly affected Origin rounds where we don't have any players. I think it's the Raiders or the Sharks, maybe for one of them, and possibly the Roosters for the other, off the top of my head. Mm. And that so that's in rounds thirteen, sixteen, and nineteen. Those are the those are the weeks where the Origin players are in Origin camp and not playing for their clubs. Mm. Hopefully, we'll hope that the Roosters can try and think what Roosters players. I guess Teddy. Yeah, I mean, probably too many. Might get a Tupo on the wing. I'm not, not sure. We'll see. Anyway, we'll preview that game in 17 weeks' time or whatever it is when that's uh, <laughs> happened. Let's talk about the Tigers-Panthers as to run us through the West Tigers team list. 
too easy. So Jareem Buller at fullback with Charlie Staines and Junior Tupo on the wings. Brent Naden is in the centres for his first game of the year with Justin Ollum. The Galvanator, Lachlan Galvin, returns. Excellent to see that. Aiden Caesar is the halfback. Stefano Uto Ikamanu and David Klemmer are the props with Appy Corusau at hooker. Isaiah Papali'i and John Bateman are in the second row for Nua Pole at lock. Latu Feinu, Alex Twal, Alex Seifarth and Samuela Feinu make up the bench. Justin Matamua is 18th man with Asu Kepaoa, Solomon Alemalo, Jake Simkin and Sione Feinu in the reserves. Uh, we're just waiting for our Panthers guest to join us. I believe he's um, de- yeah, doing some dad duties. And speaking of special guests, our guest from last week, Jay Benz, just dropped us a fiver. Good on you, Jay Benz. He said, sorry about Sunday, boys, because he's obviously a Dragons fan. He's hoping Tigers bounce back that this week. I don't, I don't know if he mentioned it on the show last week. He was actually a Balmain fan when he was a kid, Jay Benz. Um, Thanks, Jay Benz. So, yeah, he, he's always had a soft spot for the Tigers, even though – We've seen many ti- uh, Tigers Dragons games together, but um, yeah, but thanks for for that, J Benz. That's a schooner schooner adapter bowling club, roughly there that he's shouted us. So <laughs> thanks for that, um, Rob. This team list you said it in the Discord or on Twitter or in a group chat or somewhere. I can't remember where you actually said it. We interact so much, but you said it. You reckon it's the best list we've had in a long, long time in this one? Look, it's very rare that we get the coaches and the and the fans being unified, which might might be a scary thing, actually. Uh, but, yeah, like most, basically most of the changes we called for happened. Uh, look, on Monday night show when we were reviewing the St. George game, I actually didn't consider Latu Fainu at all for the, for the utility spot, just simply because he's had hamstring issues since basically late last year and that he twinged it a week and a half ago. And I just thought we might hold off on him, but obviously it's really minor. You know, I I trust, you know, the medical staff and high performance team at the West Tigers. So that was the only surprise for me. Uh, And obviously there would be some people that would say, and and I'm certainly one of them, that Kapoa had his best game for the club ever uh, on Sunday. But again, Kapoa's an edge player. Safarth going back to the bench just is, is an extra middle. So... In all honesty, guys, if that's the 17 that runs out, that's as good a 17 as I think we're likely to see, uh, especially, you know, I think Fata Ape needed a breather uh, and just to reassess his game and, and redevelop. And, and so does Sullivan. I, I didn't want to see Sullivan on the bench. Obviously, he was always going to make room for the Galvanator. Uh, so, look, really happy with the team. I, I dare say I don't think there's anyone, unless they're related to the players that got dropped, that wouldn't be happy with this lineup this week. Let's go comment. Josh McRackbag said, how much longer does Staines get to show some form of life? I mean, when we ran through the stats on Monday's show, Staines, he as, was up there, I think. Um, yeah, it was like 50 a little bit or 60 post-contact meters or something. Yeah, was... yeah. I think people have been a bit harsh on Staines. Not, and not look... to mention as well, he was also in the top three. He was in three two ones for the fans uh, from the survey. Mm. I think he got the two or the one, yeah. one or the other. So some people have been harsh on him, some aren't. Look, we at the start of the year, we were concerned about under the high ball and that sort of thing. It hasn't seemed to be a problem this year. And who will be opposing Toto? Will be opposing... It'll be Brad, Brian week? Toto. Brian Toto will be on the left wing. Yeah, He's had so... some pretty tough defensive assignments so far, and obviously mm-hmm. Toto is a pretty tough one as well. But for the most part, he's handled his defensive assignments quite well this year, this season. Uh, and obviously, his centre partnership will be with uh... you there, Josh. I think, I think, I think we've lost correct? it. Yeah, we're, we're, lo- yeah, we're losing we're, your audio a bit, Josh. Yeah. Oh, uh, Brent, Nate, sorry, can you hear? Can you hear me now? Can you hear can me hear now? now? Yeah, but it was quite intermittent there, Josh. We we missed the. A bunch um, of sentences there. Yeah, but his, part, his partner will be Brent Naden, who obviously I'm pretty sure they would have had a, at least a couple of games together back in the Penrith days, wouldn't they? On, on, the, on yeah. the same slide there. So um, that, they yeah, certainly so. fitted with each other. Uh, they, yeah, they both played in the 20... Which grand final 19. was it? 20, 2019 and 2020. Well, Staines was... When did Naden came to us two years ago? Yeah, so they would, have, they would have at least had one grand final together. 
as well. So, yeah, quite funny that they're playing, I, I assume it's their first time together for us, is it? Possibly? I haven't, I should have looked that up, but it's quite funny no that they're problem. playing against Hi, their form, former club. Because, um, well, actually, Naden, Naden was playing early last season. He might have been playing for one or two of Charlie's mm. games, but then obviously Charlie went down before with that he went down injury in the um, yep. in the family game. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, on Naden, the point I was trying to make as Naden, we've we've been hoping he'd come back for a while. We're big fans of him on the show in the centres. We obviously last year were a bit iffy of him playing on the wing, but. I think the three of us are in agreement that Naden in the centres, with all respect to Fatape, is a uh, a big plus. Yeah, for sure. I think um, the thing with Naden is we were all a little bit concerned about his defensive, li- uh, his defence and his uh, mind, like mind or mental slip slip ups, um, which he had a few of last year. But uh, I think overall he is probably a really solid option there. Obviously, the connection with Charlie is something that can contribute on the weekend. Um, but he's got an opportunity now and it's up to him to show it. I, I do think he is an upgrade on Fatape, not to say that Fatape hasn't done well so far this season, but um, I think he's he's a little out of his depth in first grade at the moment. So it's good to give him a little bit of time in reserve grade, help him find his feet um, and potentially come back up later on. Well, wasn't this the game last year where he had a bit of a brain snap when we played Penrith, even though we won? I actually thought it yeah, was one so of the four games. He went to the sin bin in this game, and I think he copped a suspension for about three or four weeks out of it, and I don't think he played first grade again for the year or much first grade for the year after his suspension ended. Salty Steve in the YouTube saying they're in the same site. When Stain scored four tries on debut, they are on the same site. So uh, our guest, our Panthers guest, Shantar, making his return to the show for the second time this year. We might be able to confirm that for us as well. Welcome back to the show, Shanta. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me back on. Uh, if you missed, Shanta was with us for the off-season episode when the Luai uh, news broke, and we'll probably get him, We'll get a Luai update when we do the Panthers team list. But um, can you confirm for us, Shanta, your memories of Staines and Naden playing on the same side as each other? Um, I, you know what? I honestly, um, I, I, I did not actually get to catch that uh, that uh, four try game uh, live. Unfortunately, I was uh, uh, <laughs> I, I was pulled away to a uh, to a shopping trip. And uh, yeah, I just kept checking my phone because it was going off for this four try debut, and I did not actually get to get to watch it live and uh, remember who uh, who was playing inside of Stains that day. Um, uh, yes, but, we, we believe uh, Salty Steve. Do, gonna, why would he lie I to us? <laughs> I think I think NATO. We played him. I think we played him both a bit about left and right because we, um, I guess, because we like to at the time shuffle around Stephen Crichton. Um, yeah, because he. Had the ability to play both, and yeah, just whatever matchup worked well that day. Uh, we're mentioning just before we brought you on, Chanta, uh, from an outside perspective, a bit biased by us, but we Sorry. think this is one of the strongest sides we've named in quite a while. Does this team, from an outsider, look pretty pretty solid? Obviously, we're five dollar outsiders, but um, look for a team. That struggled the last couple of years. I think we're we're pretty happy with the side we're putting out this week. Uh, yeah, it's well, <laughs> it's funny. It's a it's a better side than the side that beat Penrith at Bathurst last year. Mm. <laughs> Which you know, like I don't. Oh look, I um yeah, I they yeah, obviously I, I think that uh, obviously the team's not going to take them lightly. I mean, as a fan, I'm looking at it thinking, well, yeah, that's still on paper. It's a it's a better team than um, – yeah, thank you very much, uh, crazy praying mantis. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, sorry. It is a uh, – yes, I am feeling welcome. That's a, co- that's uh, a commenter. Yeah. Just to put yeah. that in context for, pe- for people not watching. That's, yeah, it's a YouTube commenter. Just before anyone listening on the audio would have no idea what a cra- what crazy praying mantis. Oh, yeah. No, that's all right. I, uh, yeah, so I apologize <laughs> for uh, yeah, bringing that up on an audio. Uh, this shows – we're not professional. 
it's okay. Ah, oh, no, that's, that's okay. <laughs> we, that's we just like winging it. It's um, the it's the fun way to do it. Yeah, uh, but yes, look, it's it is a very um, yeah very strong yeah look very strong team on on paper, and it's, as I said, it's like stronger than the team that um, that beat Penrith uh, last year. So uh, yeah, and I and I think it's it's really funny. I'm sure you guys um, I'm sure you guys caught it. Sorry, I just got to remove my headset at the moment. Uh, that's that's. Go. It's better. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, yes, so certainly, uh, yes, a better team than, uh, than the one that beat us last year. But um, yeah, I, I just have a feeling that um, because of that, uh, the, oh, that uh, game at Bathurst last year, I think the I think the the team will be up for it a bit more. Because I don't mm. know, uh, I don't know if he saw it because there was a bunch. Uh, but Panthers presentation night. I think Ivan Cleary had a few under his belt at this point that he was uh, when he <laughs> got up and gave a speech. But um, he he got up and he he talked about he talked about the fans and he thanked and he you know thanked the fans um, for another season. Then he talked about oh yeah even the one even everyone who was out there at Bathurst yeah. And then he's talking about it was uh, it was re- it was really cold. It was like pissing down rain, and we lost to the effing Tigers. F me. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's one of those th- it's one of those things where I think like yeah I think they. Um, that like it was a yeah it was a great I mean it was, I mean the target it was a great game for the Tigers they played well and deserved to win but I think it's one of those things where um uh yeah the Panthers don't the the team as they are like and even though they've achieved so much they don't require much motivation so they'd probably be thinking like well oh, yeah geez they uh they pull their pants down last year so I think they'll be yeah they'll be a bit more a bit more up for it this time around just because of what happened last time so my brothers just messaged me. He's listening in about the Staines Naden side for you guys. Apparently, on his debut, he was actually named in the centers and Naden on the wing. But from memory, he scored all his tries basically. He was on the, he, he played, oh, he he played right wing that day, but yeah, he but definitely was on the wing. Kane's Kane's definitely he sent me a screenshot of the, the team list and he's at 20. I've got it open as well. I, I yeah. found it and I've got it open as well. Yeah, uh, um, so yeah, there you Naden go. So he's that night that day too. Just the one, 50, put 56 on the shark. So, um, yeah, thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of it's weird, YouTube, I've got to go to Michael's super chat. Josh, J Ben sent us a uh, a schooner a beard. Michael Sloan sent us a bloody case where he sent us 30, yeah, 30, 31. Is it, I don't, how much does a case of beer cost? It's 31 bucks. Does that get you a case of VB? Not that I buy a case of VB, but um. From Darwin, Tiger Mickey said, agree with Red Room. Rob, best, uh, nice alliteration there. Uh, best, I can't believe I've never used that then. Red Room, Rob, triple R. Triple R, uh, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, best lineup we've got. Very positive with this squad. Just hope the internet changes are on point. Uh, I think he means inter- interchange. Yeah, interchange. Interchange, yeah. yeah. Going, to, uh, going to game on Friday to watch the Eels get strangled. Um, who's <laughs> who are the Eels playing on Friday? The Dolphins. Ah, oh, yeah. the Dolphins the without the hammer. Well, well, I, okay. Now that's not too bad. I was thinking, oh, Parramatta doing that again? They're taking like Queensland teams to Darwin. <laughs> Weird sort of thing. It's like the the fifth or sixth year in a row they've done it. Now I think, yeah, mm. yeah, I not, think not, you, it's not as bad as the Cowboys. Uh, right, as run us through the Penrith Pampers team list. No worries. Fullback is Dylan Edwards. The wingers are Sunia Taruva and Brian To'o. Isaac Tungo and Taylor May in the centres. Jerome Luai and Brad Schneider in the halves. Moses Liotta and James Fisher-Harris are the props. Mitch Kenny at hooker. Scott Sorensen and Liam Martin in the second row with Isaiah Yo at lock. Dane Laurie, Lindsay Smith, Liam Henry and Luke Garner. Uh, the bench, Jack Cole is 18th man with Maverick Geyer, Matthew Eisenhuth, Paul Alamotti, and Tyrone Peachy in the reserves. Uh, Brocker, our uh, rock star Patreon member, he said a case of VB is actually about 60 bucks these days. So uh, shows how... Good old inflation. Of, I'm not I'm not out of touch uh, with the common man. I just don't bike. I don't drink much. There you go, 60 bucks. Jesus, thanks a lot. Um, whatever prime minister brought in that, what prime minister was it, Rob, that brought in the Alka Pop tax? It was K Rudd, wasn't it? No idea. 
Yeah, um, it just keeps going up anyway. I think, yeah, the the alcohol tax, uh, but yeah, it, the price just keeps going up. So, yeah, God, I'll be, I'll be very sad the day that you know a, a case of like, you know, average working man beer is a hundred bucks. Hmm. Uh, right. Oh, uh, Rob, I'll start with you. Which, which of these players? Obviously, no Cleary. What are your thoughts on Brad Schneider um, slotting in for halfback for them? Uh, in terms of Schneider, guys, I think he'll pretty much try and play exactly how Nathan Cleary plays without sort of backing himself too much individually. Uh, he really fits into their system well. I watched him play a few games, even in their loss against Manly. He went about his job. You'd think it was Nathan Cleary, basically. It's this, the identical plays. Uh, you know, whenever he gets it or Luai gets it, they keep turning the ball back inside of their back rowers and just keep trying to, you know, pound pound our, our outside backs or 5 eight. So, look, plenty of tough matchups. Their centres are great. I mean, they're full backs in all-time form. Uh, they've got the best prop uh, prop forwards, I think, combination in the game. Uh, so we're really going to have to be on our game. And obviously, you know, an interesting matchup will be uh, Jerome Luai, who's coming to our club next year, versus the future immortal, uh, the Galvanator. So um, they're going to be <laughs> they're going to be past partners next year. But um, Mr. Luai is going to get a big shock this week. Shanta, how has our good friend Jerome Luai been this year for you guys? Um, he's been. Oh, look, I think he's been he's been solid. He, um, uh, yeah, I think he he's just basically been like the. I don't know just sort of what I what I expected of him, you know. It's um he he's just been he's been doing his he's been doing his job, and I think one of the good things that um we've done over the years um is even when Cleary is out, um we don't ask Jerome to do like too much more. There's always that uh, uh there's always that temptation. Some clubs still do it. They um but if you you go oh okay well our uh, our primary playmaker is out, and so. Yeah, yeah, they they throw way too much on the guy who was um, well, yeah, like they they try and change someone's job. Luai's just been doing like the same job. He might do a little bit more kicking than usual, but mm. uh, yeah, as Rob was saying about uh, Schneider, he just comes in and he does like the Cleary, he does like Cleary role, but um, you know, he's not Nathan Cleary, so you know, there'll be there a little is. bit more on Luai, but you're not asking mm. Jerome Luai to be Nathan Cleary and and do all this uh this other stuff that's not his natural game, so. You know, like a lot of these guys, been together for so long, been successful for so long. He's um, he's just sort of you know, just just warming into it. I think I'm, I um, yeah, and I think I think the I think he's had uh, his best game was probably, oh, I think against the Roosters. He um, yeah, he looked he looked really good and really lively. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, I think I, I think he would like to uh, like to show out a little bit considering he's uh, he's going to West next year. Um. Yeah, so it will be uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. Actually, yeah, interesting to see if he um, has any you know little words to say to uh, Lockie Galvin as well, considering they're going to be <laughs> actually. I'm interested to see how how much he chirps at all, considering he's he's mm. going there next year. He might want to you know dive back a little sides bit. of the field though. They'll be like they're both playing on the on each other's left, so nah, they're not they're not yeah. directly opposing each other. No, no, that's it. Oh well, oh, well, if anything, he might. Oh, oh well, he'd be matching up on matching up on season then. But um, yes. Anyway, that's it. I think he might, yeah, maybe keep a button on it uh, this time around. The fans are very generous, and another three bucks from Deadpool on YouTube. I'll let you as um, answer his question he's got for us. He said, "What are your thoughts? We sign Sunia uh, Sunia Taruva. Did I say that correctly? Am I close there? As no, I yeah, said. Um. I'd like it if we signed Sunia, but I don't think we will. I think Penrith are going to be able to lock him up, especially with Fisher Harris leaving and Luai leaving. I think that's going to open up a, a fair chunk of salary cap for them. And uh, Sunia is probably one of the first ones they're going to look to sign up. But I mean, if we were to get him along with Luai, there'd be a really potent combination um, out there, particularly if they're on the same side of the field, which I would really like to see. Obviously there's a couple of players in between, but um uh, definitely, definite possibilities and opportunities there. Shanta, if we just keep buying your players and then just you keep taking ours, eventually, like <laughs> it, it's got to flip upside down. Surely, we eventually will uh, win a premiership. 
on this side. <laughs> well, that's well, that's it. You've got to sign our players at a faster clip than uh, Gus Gould. So yeah, that's it. It's an arms it's an arms race. But you know, getting getting Lua or oh, getting Appy and then getting Luai and then if you got Taruba, that's you know that's like three for three. Actually, getting like good Penrith players. Mm. You know, not like you're um you know signing you know, Jane and Salmon because he was here and you know. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, cherry picking like really good ones. That's a good way to go about it. But um, yeah, as uh, as Aaron was saying, it's um, I think now given that uh, James Fisher Harris is uh, departing at the end of the year, freeing up such a huge chunk of salary cap, and there's not, there just isn't a one for one replace. I mean, what? Well, when I say one for one replacement, it's really, really difficult in terms of like intangibles and stuff to replace Fisher Harris anyway. But in terms of mm. like someone who's going to command the same sort of salary as a like a middle forward, there's just there's no one, yeah, there's no one that come close to that. So, yeah, um, the reported max offer from the Panthers for Sonia Taruva was around the three hundred, apparently around the three hundred fifty thousand dollar mark, uh, yeah. but he could be worth you know five hundred on the open market. Um, mm. Yeah, whether uh, whether the Panthers would then just up their offer to him for a couple of years to um, just to you know keep it, keep him around because he is still a very very good player. It's just the fact that uh, the rest of the back five have all uh, they're all signed up uh, longer term mm. or um, or they've got or they take up a significant amount of the cap. They think mm. that you know. The idea was, well, you know, maybe just cheap out on that other wing spot as good as a Taruva is. But then when you're losing a premium prop like Fisher Harris, then and there's no one else in the market, then well, why not just allocate just a little bit more money to keep, um, yeah, keep someone who has been really good for us for another another couple of years. So, yeah, I feel like it's less like I would I would basically resign to losing him uh, to either the Dragons or possibly yeah or possibly the Tigers because you know the mm. connection there with uh, Appy. As well, um, both yeah, Fiji uh, and oh, there's Fiji as well. Oh, cousins cousins. Oh, are they? I didn't. There you go. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, yeah, they're that. cousins. I'm not um, not sure of the exact link there, but yeah, no, there is a there is a family there. There's a family link there. I'm pretty sure. Like you know, um, I've heard that they are cousins. So hmm. yeah, so oh. there's yeah, so there's so there's that as well. So you can understand like the interest, but yeah, if um if Penrith are able now to up their offer because they've got money and uh, not much else to spend it on at the moment. Then, yeah, then he might he might end up sticking around. Well, Although maybe, um, you know, maybe Appy. But if it's his cousin, maybe Appy can say, "Look, take a hundred k per year of my salary and give it. If you get Sunia, I'll give I'll shave a hundred k a year or something." <laughs> After tax, it's not that much in the scheme of scheme of things. He's on about a mil. He's probably earned ten mil in his career. What's a Give you give your cars a bit of a uh, little bit of a kickback from your from your salary, mm. to, or even I don't know. I'd, put, I'd say that's some... probably a touch on the sketchy side. Well, you, yeah. you couldn't, you couldn't, you can't. I don't think you can. You can as long as Appy. I'm sure the roosters and stuff. Have I was about to say, is that how the roosters similar, have been doing yeah. all these years? I'm sure. I don't think it'd be tampering or anything for a player to just take a pay cut because I think Robbie Farab. Back in the day, Rob didn't he take a bit of a pay cut to keep players or something? I think Benji. I think even it was a few yeah, of the Tigers yeah, players. But that's, yeah, that's they just took. A, that's just a pay cut. That's nothing to do like take my money and give it to someone else. That's just a, a cut off their own contract and whatever the club does from there. That's what I'm saying. What they, they do from there. But but there's one with Taruva. There's an interesting. The talk with St George's offer is St George have offered him a lot more money if he cements a fullback spot. But if it turns out he ends up on the wing, then he gets less money. So that's quite an mm. interesting way to to sort of structure your contract if, mm. if it comes off mm. like that. But it seems like St. George are favourites. If I was Penrith, I wouldn't be paying him more money. Not that he's not a good player, but wingers are yeah. wingers. Like, it shouldn't be too hard for Penrith. They've probably got eight wingers coming through the ranks that are taller and bigger and faster and could do the it's job. Like, so. I I already know who's going to take that job if he leaves too, you know, but um, Jesse yeah. McLean, who debuted uh, last year in the, oh, when we got blown out by the Eels in the like, late in the regular season. He scored a try though, like, didn't he, that night? Did he, he score a he try? Did. He, he did some yeah. stuff. He, looked really, he, he, he had some really good touches, really good flashes, but the whole team was just like well off that night. But he, yeah. no, he, he looked, good. looked good. So, yeah, it's one of those things where I'm like, 
I think, yeah, I, I think yeah, he would be the one to step up and come in. And uh, yeah, to your point too, I forgot that. Um, yeah, I forgot that there was the lure of uh, center or fullback. Um, yeah, at other other clubs, whereas he's definitely a winger at Penrith. So yeah, for sure. Yes. Um, although I don't know if you guys had covered this uh, earlier in the news. Um, did you uh, did you see in the what in um, all amongst the um, the, the Fisher Harris news? Uh, Talk about, about Steph. The, yep. Yeah, about Steph. I was thinking about mine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we yeah. did. We did touch on it. Yeah, touch yeah. That, we yeah. we more than touched on it. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, it's just crazy that 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 um that sort of get out was in there. I mean, some of these things, some of these get out clauses, you don't hear about them until they're sort of you know they're sort of relevant. Mm. Um, in this case, it's only relevant because there's a, a wealthy a wealthy suitor from like a, a strong club who may be interested. I mean, I'm not saying that. Like, I think, uh, like. All things considered, like Stefano, he want to. I don't think he would want to. I don't think there's any like danger of him actually wanting to get out or anything like mm. that. And I do yeah, think, but, I do think that regardless of where the Tigers finish on the ladder, I think he'd still be getting picked for like two games for New South Wales, like surely. Like we hope so. That's what we did touch on. So that's good to get a non-biased opinion on that. So you do think that Madge will oh. pick him? I don't know. It's hard. Well, it's really hard to. It's really hard to get a get a read on. But I feel like. He would. He should be part of the Blues' future setup anyway. So to be, mm. you know, he'd have to be injured or, well, yeah. At this point, injured. Like he's not. Touch he's wood. not having a bad year or anything. Like he'd have to be. He'd have to be there. Um, you know, on the on the bench at least. Just yeah. That, that's how. That's how I feel anyway. He should be part of the New South Wales setup. Just going going forward. But uh, yes, yeah, so I don't think there's any danger of him act, even being able to activate that get out. But it's only something that's being talked about now because. There's a whole lot of money and uh, for Penrith and not really much to spend it on, which, you know, as we saw with the Warriors until this, you know, absolute freak circumstance where uh, Fisher Harris has been granted a compassionate release. Like they had no, well, they were releasing Adam Fanua Blake with no prospect of replacing him until this very mm. unique circumstance came about. So, yeah, that's it. Penrith's sort of uh, in the same boat to take something really freaky or uh, freaky to um, free up uh, a talent. That you would consider like, oh yeah, that's a fair, so that's a, that's a fair replacement for Fisher Harris. Whereas now, at the moment, it's pretty much, well, you know, what Penrith's done for a few years, anyways. Like next man up, and I probably, yeah, they probably bring, they probably will bring in someone, but I don't know that they'd necessarily bring someone else in to start in place of Fisher Harris. It might be bringing in someone to come off the come off the bench. They might have, yeah, Lindsay Smith will probably. Yeah, at this point, I'd say Lindsay Smith will be the starter next year, and um, they'll look at having someone on the interchange bench. Maybe look, maybe find an impact sort of uh, prop that they miss now that um, Lenu's gone. As Penrith Panthers, obviously, as the years go on, everyone's expecting you guys to yeah stop your dominance. It's been three in a row. Is it getting to the stage now? Are you guys look? I think as long as Cleary is at the Panthers, you guys will be a top eight side no matter what. Like he's is got the Andrew Johns factor where he, he will lift a team, uh, any team, to at least top eight. But is there a little bit of a, like, okay, we might as well enjoy this while we last? Or do you guys have the confidence that you do have a very, very good nursery bringing players um, through the system that you're just going to replace them and with the core of, yeah, Edwards, uh, Cleary, etc. you'll... You'll be fine, or do you, is it like, or oh, maybe it's like because it's obviously been from the outside looking in, looked very easy for the Panthers. Like you've kind of, yeah, out and out been the best team the last few years. Is it, do you guys kind of feel like mm, we're falling back to the pack a little bit now? Yeah. Oh, look, I think this is, um, yeah, these the losses now they sort of feel a bit the uh, they feel a little bit different than um, than the last lot. So, I mean. Of Cry oh, look, Crichton was a big loss because, and I, and I guess that's one that we're not going to be able to measure until we get to the big games at the end of the year because that's when he made all the difference with them. Um, mm. It's just some truly just like clutch stuff. Like, that was such a clutch guy in big games. So that's that's one that I mean, I, I, that we'll see later on how that that one goes. But um, yeah, the loss of um, like losing Luai was was hard was hard because. 
he has so much that energy, attitude, swagger, as well as just being, you know, a good player in his own right, but that kind of an attitude and vibe that he brings to the squad. Uh, but then, oh, man, absolutely. In terms of, like, feeling like, uh, like well, this this year, um, you know, I, I suppose you've seen uh, like the last couple of years, Channel 9's put out those, like, little mini-series, uh, or the little documentaries there where um, uh, Penrith, uh, basically it's like Penrith's, um, like media guy um he he did like a, he's done a fantastic job he like just recorded all these you know they were him and uh, this other videographer they just recorded um all this footage of the team like in the final series and um uh and you know that it sort of captures how there's like a theme that uh that the guys carry on with them through the season and uh i think uh the theme in 2022 that sort of like pulled them together that was um they had like a Top Gun theme. They called it, uh, I think it was like One Last Dog Fight because uh, Appy and uh, Kikau were leaving. Mm. And so they said, you know, they sort of pulled together and they bonded together over that. And um, then um, over the, for the uh, 2023 season especially, it was all about uh, Undisputed where they had like a, um, uh, they had like a, a custom belt made up and after each game they'd, you know, add a mm-hmm. plate to the belt before, you know, they won the grand final and they got the final plate on the belt. So, like, Undisputed was that thing. And then this year, already, because Luai is leaving, they called this year the last ride. <laughs> now that, like, hmm. Fisher-Harris is also leaving and considering yeah. how he is, like, such a huge, huge driver of, like, that just, like, the culture of, like, work ethic and defence and just leading by example. Uh, yeah, that's it, I think. I think that's that's it. Like, this year, and it really does, it really does feel like the last ride. I feel like... Um, yeah, like I feel like they could still win it all this year, but then next year it's um yeah it's next ne- yeah from next year n- next year it's going to be really hard. I mean like oh, look twenty twenty two grand final um when Charlie Staines put Clint Gutherson on skates, I turned to my sister and I said, "Holy shit, soak this in! This is going to be the absolute best that it gets as a Panthers fan." Back to back premierships. And then, like, oh, yeah, we, we won another one. It was, like, which is, you know, it's insane. It's, like, it's, it's house money at this point as a fan. It's absolutely, like, ridiculous success uh, in, like, the modern era. Uh, yeah, and that's it. And I always say, like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, this this year really feels like it and this and losing two, like, um, yeah, more so Fisher-Harris, but Lui as well. Two guys in different ways really shaped the culture of the Panthers between, like, you know, mixing in that passion, that energy, that swagger with, like, ruthlessness and and just, the, yeah, just the hard, just that hard work ethic. I know it would have rubbed off on the rest of the squad, but you've got two guys who are driving that culture. And, and you know, that's why, um, I mean, that's why, like, with the Bulldogs, you see with the Bulldogs when they're recruiting all these Panthers players and that, they, they're trying to sort of recruit the culture. I think, um, well, yeah, the Tigers have recru- actually recruited a bit of the culture with Luai, and now mm. the Warriors have fortunately, yeah, been the beneficiaries of the fish wanting to go go home, and they're, they're also taking a, actually like a re- the real drivers of the Panthers' culture. So, yeah, that's it. We just got to see how um, the rest of the yeah, so how they how they do with this next the next man up. Um, yeah, that's it. I know. I know. I think um, like Moses Leota will definitely. He's already. He, he's already like up there close with Fisher Harris now. Like over the years, as they've been like uh, calling themselves the Bash Brothers, and <laughs> and I mean, you see, uh, we know how hard Moses Leota goes. So um, yeah, I think he. I think he could. He could probably step into that breach and be the leader of the like the, the leader of the pack. But um, yeah, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier when you have got a, a good running mate as well. So. For, yeah, so for Panthers fans, it's um, it feels like okay, well, this 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 might really be the last ride. Then it's going to be, uh, you know, it's still going to be a good ride. <laughs> you still gonna, we're still going to be in the eight, probably the four. But yeah, it feels like it will be finally like you know a bit of a bit of a tapering. That's funny. All these players you mentioned, like the Bash Brothers, and then obviously the the ball, the '96 Bulls. All these players aren't even old enough. They wouldn't remember the Mighty Ducks. They wouldn't remember the '96 Bulls. They're not old enough to remember all <laughs> all know, these it's, things. It's yeah, it, it's great. It's great. It's great that they yeah. That's what I was thinking. They're probably God. When were how yeah? How old are they? I'm gonna, they're probably like 
maybe maybe they're in preschool when they might oh god i'm sorry i i, I just have the uh the match preview up on nrl.com moses leota born july 1995 mate oh i just saw it yeah no i guess maybe well, he yeah i mean champions and mighty ducks i feel like we're early 90s but i guess you can yeah, i was gonna say he's, 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 he was he wasn't he's, watching him Watch, wasn't watching yeah. on VHS. Yeah, he's probably started on Disney Plus or something. <laughs> um, has you got any idea what we're talking about here? No, not not at all. <laughs> um, boys, any other thoughts? As in Robo, as any other thoughts on this Panthers side? We haven't previewed the game yet. <laughs> I don't know. We're, I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I can't um, give it. Long. No, look, it's just, it's just, it's just a good, strong team. The, the difference I see this year to the last three years, I actually think, even though they've lost some personnel, I actually think Penrith play a better style this year. They've still got that same system, but they're prepared to really promote the football a lot more in terms of their second phase. Most of their forwards will normally like do a big hit up and get a quick play the ball. You're finding a lot of their forwards now are like popping the ball out the back, and they're just a lot more enterprising. And I think. That's recognition from Ivan Cleary, knowing they've got to be a little bit more different this year and and just go to the next level. And and the, the stuff that's worked the last three years might not work this year. So I, I'm I'm just concerned about them offloading the ball a lot. And we've got to make our tackles because St George owned us in 90% of the tackles on Sunday. Uh, mm. And I know we're going to get a better physical effort this week, but we've we've got to show it in every in every tackle because Penrith are just too good. If you take your foot off the gas, they'll they'll hurt you. But um, just to sum up Penrith, we've got to hold them the first 20 minutes. I, th- I find Penrith blow teams out of the water the first 20 or 30 minutes. If you're in the game after 30 minutes, you're a really big chance of winning. So we, as like, if we're close near half time, I'm not saying Penrith would, won't win, but if we're close, obviously, I, I'd give ourselves a big chance. So no tries in the first minute of the game like last week. Did they score a try last year? I don't even think they got a no, try last drag- year. I'm talking about the Dragons. The Dragons scored in the oh, first mate, minute. You, you knew from the first tackle, mate, when Steph ran the ball back from the in goal, they had three St. George players smashed mm. him, and, and Steph hasn't been hit like that from a kickoff all year. So St. George showed their intent last Sunday, and, and we came out thinking, as Benji said, that we were going to do it easily, and we just weren't prepared to wrestle. Or We never won one play the ball. Every time St. George got tackled, they'd either win a penalty or – their markers to take off because we literally couldn't win a tackle. They dominated 90% of the tackles. It was so embarrassing. And and I, I think you'll get a better effort this week. But unfortunately, we're, we're playing a much better team. As the Panthers are coming off the bye and we have a, what, six-day turnaround? Although we do have a few players who didn't play last week, so I guess that kind of counters for those. But... I mean, our forward pack coming off a game only six days ago, as opposed to these guys being well and truly rested. How much of a factor do you think that's going to be? I will. The one thing I will say so far this year, teams that have come off the bye have looked a little bit flat to start their games for the most part. I think probably the one exception to that, actually, hang on, who had the bye in round two? Was it the Titans or the Dolphins? I think it was the Titans because then they played the Dolphins in round three. That was probably the one exception where a team's had a bye and come out of the game or come out of that and gotten off to a, a good start in their next game. Uh, you look at us in round two, obviously that round one bye hurt us. The Sharks last weekend against the Rabbits got off to a fairly slow start. And I don't know, there just seems to be a bit of a trend this year where the bye doesn't seem to be helping much in the first half. But I think the rest for the Penrith guys, obviously, they've had a few niggly injuries. Uh, Luai, I think it was, copped a bit of a an injury in the Manly game, but with the extra bit of resting time, he seems all good to go. So that's the that's the only thing I can really like say there. Obviously, we've had a fair few guys miss last week um, or not play first grade last week, so there's a there's going to be some more rested legs there. Uh, you got anything stats wise for us, as for this game? Uh, just that this is the ground we're playing at, obviously, Carrington Park in Bathurst. We have a 100% success rate there. Obviously, it is a very small sample size, but I'm taking it while I can. <laughs> I, I, I read somewhere, too, that we've won our last eight out of our last 11 games against Penrith when they haven't had Nathan Cleary. I heard that, too. I thought that was a I can't believe we've, I can't believe we've played that. Is that go back before... 
before he started play. playing. Right. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, how have we played eleven games with Cleary injured? That doesn't sound right. But yeah, they kind of make sense. I've got the yeah. previous game. They, they, they're they're going to come out. They're, they're going to come out. They'll come out red hot, uh, Aaron, because, I mean, Shunter was saying earlier, you know, what Ivan Cleary said at the presentation or whatever it was, you know, effing West Tigers, blah, blah, blah. I remember not too long ago hearing, we're talking about James Fisher-Harris, he actually said the one time in his coaching career that Ivan Cleary's blown up and lost the plot was when the West Tigers thrashed Penrith in Magic Round. I think it was not 2019. So yep. but he hates us. There is no way they're coming out like taking us for granted or or going to be flat. I mean, they got pumped by Manly, absolutely destroyed when they, they should have beaten Manly. You know, they, they got off to a good start and they just thought it was going to be a cruise and, and Manly tore them apart. So there's no way there's going to be complacency uh, in Bathurst. I, I think they'll come out hot. I, I, I'd love a wet, wet track, obviously, because wet weather kind of makes games a lot closer, but um yeah it'll be it'll be a really good first 20 minutes it'll it'll just show us how much improvement we've got as as a team like if we can bounce back from uh the debacle that was uh st george on sunday not only that but they'll have they'll probably have had this fixture st- circled in their calendar due to what happened last year and they'll be looking to make a statement saying this is their turf um we're going onto their turf and we're not going to beat them again sort of thing too just looking at the previous games, last year was obviously close. Year before that, also we only lost by two points at uh, Combank Stadium. Year before that, I completely forgot that we played during the bubble. What, what I can't remember what we called lockdown, whatever. Twenty twenty one, we played them at Dolphin Stadium. I completely forgot that whole season's basically a blur. Same with twenty twenty, but we did beat them at Leichhardt. So we beat them at Leichhardt. They were missing about seven players, though. Origins, so, okay. No, they were, they were so, missing nine. So that was pre-second lockdown. That was pre-second lockdown. I completely forgot about that. So, um, yeah, before that, a couple of losses uh, at Penrith in front of 3,700 people at Penrith. Oh, that was 2020. Okay, that makes sense. It would have been at rest- Oh, I think we've lost Josh again. Drifted. Yeah, he's back. 2020 in July, we played Lidwell. Uh, did I drop out then? Yeah, all, all Super Chat money's got to go to your internet, brother. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> playing it. It, it. It hasn't brought up anything. Like, usually I get an icon to say my internet is not strong, and I'm sure, not sure what's going on tonight. Maybe the wife's watching 4K something or other in the other room. Um you got me all good now. Yeah, yeah. I haven't the internet. I haven't had an icon come up to say my internet is too slow or anything. I think it's Streamyard. I'm going to blame Streamyard. It's their fault. Um, Shanta, any West Tigers Panthers games that are a classic? I'm trying to think today, having a thought about this. And Rob, you're the only one that probably remembers. I drove all the way down from the central. Well, I didn't drive. I was too young to drive. Um, Went with a mate to the famous Panthers comeback game in 2000. Um, Yeah, apart from that, I'm trying to think of a Penrith Tigers game that was a classic, like like a memorable... I feel like a lot of other teams we have... The Dragons last week, we had multiple semifinals to talk about and that sort of thing. Is there a West Tigers Panthers game that stands out for you? Shanta, on your memory, when you think about the teams playing against each other? Uh, yeah, as, as you said, aside from that um, insane comeback game, not yeah, nothing nothing really stands out. Um, the only other games that I sort of remember, I mean, and it's not because of the quality, it's not really because of the quality of the game either. I just remember, um, oh, I think in the 2019 season when the Panthers were abs- was just absolutely dire straits, um, I, uh, I, I think it was a, I don't know if it was a wet, it might have been a wet night as well. This was when, um, Dylan Edwards was having like a real like crisis of confidence and it was so bad that it was like, you've got to move, they've got to move him out of fullback or they've got to drop him or something because he's dropping everything. 
Uh, he had because he had an absolute because I think yeah this uh, he had an absolute mare against Bel- Melbourne and Bathurst and then I think he, yeah we're playing the Tigers at Penrith and uh, yeah not a good game but uh, I think during the game I can't remember God I can't remember who Edward switched with whether it was um, you know Naden or somebody uh, basically somebody else had to go to fullback and Edwards ended up finishing the game out on the wing. I think it was just because he was just kept dropping things. But then um, I, I think the Tigers were ahead for much of the match. And I think, uh, yeah, Edwards ended up scoring a try very late. Then Cleary converted to uh, to level the scores. And I think we won in golden point off a of Cleary field. Nine, eight. I, think yeah. it was, I think it was like something terrible, like a 9-8 game or some sort of like nine, disgusting eight. scoreline like that. I'll get it up that's on it. the screen. That's, that's, the one, that's the one that sticks yeah. in mind. But it's nothing to do with the quality of the game. It's just the little bit of... Um, I think we had a conversion hit the post as well from memory. Does anyone uh, boys? I think we did. But it wasn't it? from too far out. I was actually at that game, and it was a pretty devastating one to go home from. Yeah, it, it, um, Isan Masters could not hit a single conversion. That was night. it, Masters. Good, good of, memory. Yeah, he had some sort of injury. Yeah. I think it might have been like a, a hamstring or a quad or something like that, and he just yeah he just couldn't nail any conversions and went to golden point and they won with a Nathan Cleary field goal. Um, you, yeah. I'm sure you've we seen scored. that Cleary Iceman meme or image. I think one of the, like one of those images comes from that game. Uh, I think go. it, yeah, I think it does. And I think if, if you look, if you can sort of make it out over my shoulder, I end up getting it for shits and giggles. I end up getting one of those, uh, again, audio medium apologies. I actually have a little canvas <laughs> print made up of Nathan Cleary doing the little Iceman taunt. <laughs> which ironically is from the World Club Challenge in Penrith uh, when he leveled the scores to send us the golden point and then we lost. So, Sorry, what's Iceman? Oh, the Iceman. Oh, the Ice ice in the veins. veins. Um, that's where you... Um, oh, point, oh, yeah, where you point to your wrist. Arm, sticks the arms out and he has the uh, the invisible syringe like in... You know, yeah, yeah, like, LeBron. Ice into his LeBron. Yeah, I think, uh, is it LeBron that does that? I'm trying to think which basketball uh, player. Maybe, no, Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum does it all the sorry, time. I'm yeah, not a I'm sure. guy. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's just quite it's quite funny the couple of times that he's cracked he's he's cracked that out. But uh yeah, that's it. That's the even, yeah. even funnier but, when you lose after he does it. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I mean that's why I got that thing done. I thought it's it's just funny, but just on levels. The one, the fact that he did it, and then two, the fact that we lost afterwards. But uh <laughs> yeah, and that's as sorry, yeah, the other yeah, the only other game, as I said, like that sort of sticks out of memory is um Oh, just the – I think it was the game we played, you guys, at uh, Combank um, where I, th- uh, I think we – yeah, we, we won. I can't remember what the scoreline was. It was the one where BJ Leilua – Yeah, Lua. Nuts Leilua lost take, his head. His head off. And then, uh, I, uh, then I think because Ivan was getting fed in the coach's box, this is the, the blowing kisses game. So that's yeah, the only reason why it. July 2020. In 2020. Oh, 20, no, yeah. that was 2020. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, he probably didn't cop the razzing that he um that he deserved from Tigers fans um in 2019 because we only played. I think I think we only. Uh, but yeah, there was that uh, the home game in Penrith, and then yeah, we played you guys in Magic Round, so it wasn't a uh, partisan Tigers crowd up there. I was there at that Magic Round game though. I do I, I do remember that because that one yeah that one really did uh, uh, did feel like rock bottom for the club. <laughs> Just thinking, like, man, you guys should be for this game where you, you know, the coach, you know, the coach has come back from this club to coach you guys, and yeah, just the the effort that they put in, just watching how easy it was for that night for the Tigers to just rip them to shreds. There weren't enough beers in uh, in Suncorp mm-hmm. to like wash that away. I just it was an out of body experience, thinking like, oh my god, we're terrible. Yeah, <laughs> we're really, yeah we scored. Really bad. We scored a few tries very very quickly oh. that night. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure uh, that game was the game where we broke our record for most points scored in the first 20 minutes of a game as well. Sounds about right. It was a, yeah, we were out of the gates. I remember thinking we'll four tri- up four tries pretty quickly and thinking like, oh, Penrith's going to cut. I think Penrith scored once. I'm like, oh, no, like just thinking Penrith are going to come back, but wasn't to be. Uh, Rob Shadamas, what have you got for us this week? You got a few few bets on both the ponies and the rugby league. Yeah, well, firstly, very bad week last week. Uh, no good with Jason Day, Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, that, they went like bustards. Uh, the two horse tips, one came second, one came nowhere. 
Uh, we did get the five leg multi, but because of the draw with New Zealand and Manly, you only got half the dividend. So it was basically doubling your money. And uh, the, the same game multi, we only got one one try score out of three. So if you put a dollar on each of those things, you would have got back $2 out of your $8. So not a good week last week. Uh, this week, I've just kind of mixed it up a bit. I've given you a couple of horse tips there. Um, and I've also given you my thoughts. I, to be honest, it's just such a hard NRL round. These are probably the only two NRL games I'm quite confident about. And I just put them in as a four-leg multi. You can just, if you like any of those, you can just play them individually. But they're, they're all obviously around even money. Uh, so so they're the four tips I like. But if you multi them up, uh, depending on what, what odds you get at what time of the day you put your bet on, you probably get between 12 and $15 if you let them ride as a multi. So both those horse tips are pretty short prices. I think they're about $2.10 and $1.80. And obviously line bets are always, you know, $1.85, $1.90. So if you multi those up, uh, hopefully we'll have a better week this week. Or just pick one one or two of those that you like and, and leave the other couple out. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, if you go to the link in our profile pages of our socials or westtigers.com.au for our link tree, link the big purple button, sign up to um, Chase Bet and send them a message if you do so. And yeah, they'll uh, help you out. Tell them we sent you. What's gambling really costing you for free and confidential support? Call one 800 858 858 or visit gamblinghelponline.com. Uh, dot org dot au not dot com um right I, I think i've actually got the graphic wrong there i, I might i've got race six number six seven but you that's race five that's race, that's race five. five race five i'll yeah. fix that for the socials but um and remember right guys I, I did know someone I, I know one person that became a millionaire from gambling okay but he used to be a billionaire okay so just <laughs> gamble responsibly <laughs> Uh, righto, on to our tips for this week. If you want to join in, Shanta, as well. So, Chookies v. It's a pretty tough, um, I feel like it's the tough draw this week. A few games that are toss of the coin. This one, dollar ninety-five, dollar eighty-five. Two of us, Rob and I, have gone the Chookies as you've gone the Storm. Yeah, I've gone the Storm. Um, I think I just trust the Storm a little bit more. The Roosters seem a little bit hot and cold at the moment. Not 100% sure what we're going to get from them. They don't have Sam Walker this week. He's not. He's only in the reserves. So um, the Storm, I think Bellamy is going to have shoved a rocket up their ass after how they performed against the Dogs last week. And I think we'll see a much improved Storm team. And yeah, I think it's as close to a 50-50 game as you get this one. And I'm, I'm going with the Storm. Just looking, Shawnee Bloor, it's 550 to score a try again this week. I might put a little bit of... It, would, it wouldn't shock, dollars. though, to see Sam Walker get a start, Aaron. Like, if he's, if he's named, if he's any good, he'll play. But, yeah, I agree with you. It's a, it's a toss of the coin. Absolute very hard game. And Melbourne have got out of jail twice in a row, you know, sort of getting late wins against Canterbury and Brisbane the last couple of weeks. And I just figured away from home, they, they you know, I think the Roosters need this a bit more. But, again, very hard to pick. Oh, sorry, Shanta, just, having, yeah, yeah. just yeah, sorry, just on the on this game. Um, sorry, because I was just having a look at the previews here, and it uh, does look like uh, Sam Walker actually didn't survive the cut downs by the look of it. Um, yeah, they've uh, he's so yeah, they've done the cut downs to nineteen, and, and uh, he, he didn't make that cut. Yeah, okay, interesting. Uh, Warriors and Dragons. This one, which ground is this at? Has I've got the betting app open. It doesn't actually say. I think it's win. So is him down in Wollongong. I'm pretty, winner, sure, I'm pretty sure it's Wollongong. I'll, um, I'll um, pull it up. Yeah, Dragons, I yeah, don't know. Wollongong. Maybe because they scarred me last week. I've gone with them, even though they're outsiders and the Wars are killing it. I don't know. At home, I think that's why I did tip them because they are in the gong. I don't know. That, their confidence would be up there. And, yeah, the Tigers can do that to you. I don't know. Just feeling, feeling risky. I love the Waz. Uh, yeah, didn't really like tipping against them, but away Don't from home. You, Josh, very hard game again. Yeah, um, I mean the, the Warriors played ninety minutes last week, so they, they got you know they, that's taken a lot of juice out of them. And and mm. no offense to our beloved Tigers, that was a that was a track gallop for St George. We never showed up. 
Anyone else? It is also, thoughts? but the the thing is that I think it is a it's a five day turnaround for the Dragons and a six day turnaround after the ninety minutes for the Warriors. So, pretty interesting one. This one, I think, it's actually going to be. Oh uh, Ben, he said it's at said Cogra, not Wollongong. This one, okay. I hate, I hate to disagree with you, Ben, but I've got the draw pulled up on my on my laptop here, and it says Win Stadium, Wollongong. Yeah. Okay, Ben. Sorry, Benny. <laughs> oh, um, ben and Aaron Wolf. Yeah, out. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> one, sorry. Why don't you go to Wollongong? Why don't you go to Cogger? I'm going to say. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to Wollongong then. Catch us later. <laughs> uh, eels, Finns, we've all gone Eels in this one, annoyingly. Yeah, the Eels will probably, as much as I hate everything about that franchise, but. Shanta, do you think the Eels will win this one at home? Yeah, they're home, they're home away from home. Yeah, I think, yes, taking a Queensland. Oh, they're in Darwin, aren't they? This is in Darwin, this game. Yes, you mentioned that's this right. earlier. Yeah, yeah but, but as, as, as we said before, it's like, well, it's a under undermanned Dolphins, so, <laughs> yeah, probably a better chance than, um, well, I suppose they didn't take the Titans up there, then they'd be pretty happy. But, no, the Dolphins in there, yeah, with uh, down on troops because – yeah, depth's still a bit of an issue for them in uh, their infancy. So, yeah, yeah Eels should be pretty confident in getting the job done. Uh, in our game, we've all gone the Panthers. I did put a little bit of money on us. I think $5 is very juicy for us. It's a bit um, rude, I think. Yeah, but... Yeah. yeah, you're pretty confident. What do you reckon, Shanta? 13 yeah. plus in this one, or do you think it'd be close? No, I, I, yeah, I'd be, yeah, I'd be reluctant to go thirteen. I'd be reluctant to go thirteen plus because, you know, as I said, it's still, it's like, yeah, they'll Penrith will be a bit more up for this game, but the Tigers, yeah, on paper, it's a better team than uh, than they had against us last year in one. So I, I think, I think one to twelve still, yeah, but uh, I, I do think that I, that the Penrith would win, but yeah, still close. The, the line's thirteen and a half, so. Yeah. Do you reckon, Rob, do you reckon that's tempting to take the 13 and a half line? If we show up, guys, I, I think the total points under 40.5 is a special. Because mm. I, I, okay. I, I don't think we've got that many points. And even if we were to do well and win, you know, we might get 18 points. And if we don't do well, I don't think Penrith will put too much on it. Like maybe we score six or 12 points and they get 24, you know, something similar to last week with St. George. So... I, I really think if you know if someone's having a dollar on the game, like I'd go under forty point five. Hmm. Oh, wrong button. Uh, Manly Titans. We've all gone Manly. That's up on the Gold Coast. Yeah, the Titans. They're pretty sucky this year. They, they played well last week, though. Yeah, they come back. They almost came back. Yeah. Yeah, be uh, an interesting clash because um, Jason Saab's back this week, so you got. Saab on Khan Pereira. That's probably the two fastest men in rugby league. So I hope someone puts a kick through and we get to see them have a have a running race. They've really brought back the reinforcements this week, Manly. I think they've had four players named to return from injury layoffs. Yeah, Garrick's back, uh, but they have lost uh, Ben Travojevic. Nathan Brown is another one of them who's back, and he absolutely blitzed it in that game against Penrith two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, Broncos have all gone Broncos up in Brisbane. Oh, they're not on Friday night for once. There you go. The, the fans Saturday might night. actually, <laughs> yeah, they might they might turn up on the wrong game. night. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's not Friday night prime time. They might turn up the wrong the Queenslanders. You never know. They might rock, rock up on the wrong night. Josh, this um, is another one. This is another one. Everyone thinks this is straightforward, but again, the Broncos are missing Adam Reynolds. And I remember last year, I, I'm not sure what round it was, it might have been around round eight. Canberra had only won one out of their first seven games and Brisbane were flying and Canberra knocked them off. So hmm. capable of causing an upset. Uh, this one's tough. I, I tip the Bulldogs and that's, I'm an idiot, but um, it's pretty close in the betting here. I, just, I don't know. If, if I'm in doubt, I go home team usually, but um, Doggies Knights, pretty much all pretty much close to even money. You boys have gone the Knights. Um, coin Shanta? flip for me. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. Yeah, this is another 50 50. I think I just trust the Knights a little bit more than the Dogs. Hmm. The Dogs are also copping a few injuries. Um, they played this game and then they've got a bye next week before they play us. So 
the buyer will give them a chance to refresh have we got a little para- bit. Have we got the Parramatta this year? We, we're following the buy again. What Parramatta had last year? Not sure. Uh, we we played Parramatta in the last round after our last buy. Uh, um, uh, yeah, tough one. Um, yeah, toss of the coin. Uh, and then finish on Sunday, Arbo, Sharkies, and the Cowboys. I've gone Sharkies again, if in doubt go home team, but you boys have gone the outsiding outsiders in the travelling Cowboys. Yeah, I just think the Cowboys need to bounce back, but they're, they're very rocks and diamonds, and they're part of that multi that I gave you guys with the two and a half, so um, I've, got to, I've got to stick with what I've tipped. <laughs> Shanta, any thoughts on that one? Um, yeah, I'm... Um... Yeah, I'm, str- I'm. I'm actually yeah, struggling to get a read on on this one too. Uh, <laughs> Very hard weekend. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, oh, that's an I'm a, uh, I, I really, yeah, I really don't know. I'm um, I probably, yeah, again, just probably lean like lean Cronulla, but not with a, not with a great deal of of confidence. Um, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, they they're the hard ones to being... get, a read, get a read on. The footy, the tough when tipping's tough. I feel like the league's in a good spot. If it's if we're going into games thinking we don't know who would win, I feel like a few years ago there'd be we'd had like eight nine dollar outsiders. I feel like the footy this year it's it's evened out a little bit, and that's a good thing. Every every team should go into a game thinking they're pretty within reason. They're a chance. Uh, I'll get well, Can- win. Canterbury, St. George, and us have been rubbish for a couple of years. So when we're mm. competitive, I mean that that's three games that are a bit more even, aren't they? Yeah, so it, do- it does help if the bottom teams, you know, pull their finger out. And when the best player in the world isn't playing as well, in Nathan Cleary, uh, New South Wales Cup that is one PM on Saturday at Bluebet Stadium. The Magpies they got a few. Yeah, obviously with players coming back in the first grade, that means there's a few players for the Magpies. Jaden Sullivan is in the six. Um, Sione Fainu starting uh, front rower there. Jackie Simpkin at hooker. Uh, Kepa Oa on an edge. So Talon De Silva in the 14. So Simpkin and De Silva on the same side. Josh felody has been moved to the bench. Jordan Miller's there as well. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit. They haven't named a second winger yet or when I screenshot this. But, um, yeah, so with the first grade side getting some recruits, it means trickles down for the Magpies. So, fingers crossed they can get get it done out Penrith way. Jersey Flag play before that game. They're at 11.15 a.m. So, if you're going to watch Tigers Flag and the trying to think what time is kick uh, uh no you wouldn't make it i'm trying to think if can you can you drive from penrith to bathurst in time between games but you literally can't you they're would almost... have literally five minutes yeah get a, a helicopter wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't make it so um yeah well, that kind of sucks uh righto on saturday at leichardt oval our harold matt's magpies and our lisa fiola west tigers uh, under 17s girls are both playing for a spot in the grand final. So the girls play, no, the boys play first. They're 11 a.m. up against the Sharkies, and the girls, they're playing the Steelers at 12 30. So get out to Leichhardt Oval on Saturday, assuming you're not going out to Bathurst. Um, yeah, you probably wouldn't make, make both of them. The girls would finish what, one o'clock. You'd have to get a few speed and fines to, uh, get from Leichhardt after that one out to Bathurst. But, yeah, get out and support the girls and boys on Leichhardt Oval. Uh, Yeah, Leichhardt Oval, more footy at Leichhardt Oval this week, and it still can't get government funding to be improved. But it is what it is. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Westlife. I think I saw Shane Coet before drop something in there for us on the Discord. If you want to support the show, um, join us in the Discord. What's the chat going this week? He said, fellas, I'm confident about this weekend. We can beat these putrid daywalkers. Let's go, West Tigers. So I don't know what 
daywalkers. Isn't a daywalker? Is, is that a reference to Pandora? I don't know why. A daywalker to me is someone who's got quite going off South Park. It's someone who's not quite a redhead. They're uh, they're they're like a, a cherry blonde. They will. Oh, that's, it's a bit that like a, a shot at Luke Garner. I don't know. <laughs> Not sure, Could but uh, it's a it's a vampire thing, isn't it? Daywalker. Uh, yeah, it's like um a, a twi- in, the, in the Blade movies um, on comics. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, Blade, yeah, yeah, vampire, but you know only part vampire, and so it can go out during the day. But uh, yeah, South okay. Park's adopted the basically meant yeah, like kind of ginger, ginger and yeah, yeah, yeah. Not can... ginger that you can't go out in the sun. So, yeah, I, you know, so. I guess like maybe Liam Martin sort of might meet that threshold as well. But yeah, definitely feels like a slight at Ghana. There's Shane, I think Shane's watching. Explain, explain your joke, young man. Um, <laughs> don't really understand that one. Uh, we'll be back on Monday, eight thirty PM, on the YouTube's to yeah review this one. Um, Shanta, thank you very much again for yeah joining us on the West Life podcast. Shouts to Head Ben Harvest on YouTube too. He's been telling everyone to like, and and now he's saying. Yeah, 93 subscribers. Well, we're up to 193. That would make us we're on 907 subscribers. So if you are listening, we're trying to get to that thousand. So if you're even if you're listening back on the audio, go to YouTube, please subscribe and try and get us to that one thousand mark. Um, truly appreciate. It. Even if you continue to listen to us on the audio, you don't have to watch us and look at our mugs on the uh, on the screen you can continue to do that but give give us a subscribe and trying to get the uh the numbers up there but yeah shanta uh just saw sh- someone sign up as a member too totally forgot to plug that as well shawnee m is a member as well so send us a dm shawnee and i'll give you the link to our discord as well so slide into our dms on the socials i'll do just that as well very generous tonight boys we've got members and Super chats coming through the uh, the yin yang. So, uh, any last thoughts before we head into the weekend? No, not at all, guys. Just hope, uh, hope we we bounce back. And obviously, it's a must win game. We have got Brisbane next week. So, if we don't win this game, we're yeah. I, I think it's uh, at this early stage of the season, uh, we're not going to be much of a chance of finals if we don't manage a win this week. Uh, as we always go for you last, Shanta, any, any, anything you'd like to say? And again, yeah, thank you for joining us on the show tonight. No, that's right. Thanks for having me. It's been, uh, it's been therapeutic to talk through the stages of grief of losing one of the best players in the world. Well, actually we've got, well, reigning golden boot winner. Uh, no, but, but yeah, sorry, this, um, yeah, this, look, oh, this is one of my favorite weekends of the year. Cause I like, uh, like getting away for these, uh, Panthers Bathurst games, um, good little uh, good little drive out there for me from where i live and um yeah and i do um yeah and i, I mean i like um i mean i like the tigers as a club so it's um it's good to get to play them out there for uh back-to-back years and um yeah i'm just looking well i'm looking forward to looking forward to a good contest like certainly yeah certainly i don't, I don't think it's going to play out as like the five dollar outsiders that um you know being paying as at the moment so mm. yeah so for three uh we were nine dollars last year. Dry deck for me. Dry deck. I would like a dry deck because I, yeah, you know, I was there, you know, getting rained on hard last year. But uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah, big good times this weekend. Nothing like a dry deck. Uh, as any parting, parting words. Just want to thank everyone for all the support that they give the podcast. Uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Uh, looking forward to hopefully a really good game. And uh, this may be the last year for the foreseeable future when we play the Panthers just once. I think given the the big signing of next year, we're going to get two of these Western Sydney cat rivalry games um, moving forward, which should be good fun. Yeah. Okay, as it, despite you guys being the force that you are, it is from a fan point of view, sad that we only play you once because it is a good good rivalry as well. It, it, same with Manly this year. You thought the NRL for sure would play this against Manly. But anyway, let's save that for uh, another evening. Thank you to the hundreds of you that joined us live tonight and the thousands of you that support the show, listening, watching, wherever you may be. And as always, 
Go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. Thanks for listening to another episode of the West Life Podcast. Please follow us at West Life Pod on Instagram and at Twitter and facebook.com forward slash West Life Pod. You can also support and take part in the show at patreon.com forward slash West Life and give us a subscribe on YouTube and turn notifications on. We'll see you again next time on another episode of the West Life Podcast. Thank <laughs> you.